which we generally consider are important for choosing India <coughs> as a business destination. Amongst the various reasons which have been listed here, you will please notice that point number two reflects the rapidly growing consumer market in India. In fact, it is directly related to the population in India. <coughs> As I said earlier, the population in India is 100, uh, 1,240 million. Out of this population, 64% population is expected to be of youngsters. That is about 800 million. There is a huge middle class in the country. The, I mean, the number of the middle class is also estimated at about 100 million. Now, the result of this kind of population and middle class is that the home or domestic market in India <coughs> is so big that it can consume the products and services even without any export. In fact, it is this secret which makes India progressing year after year. Because even if there is a recession in the other countries of the world, in India we don't bother much because our home market is big enough to consume our products and services. <coughs> Sorry. Now, having dealt with very, very generally as to why one could make investment in India. Let us now see that if a non-resident, a foreigner, a foreign entrepreneur decides to make investment in India, how he can do it? What are the entry options for the foreign enterprises in India? This we have we have tried to list out the various options which are available to foreign entrepreneurs in India. The options start at slide number nine, empty options for foreign enterprises. Now you will see <coughs> that a foreign entrepreneur can float a company in India. The companies can be formed as joint venture companies. A joint venture company would mean that the non-resident is an owner, is a partner of the company. The other part is owned by somebody in India. A foreign enterprise can float a wholly owned subsidiary in India. That is the 100% shares of the Indian company would be held and owned by the non-resident. Besides floating of companies, a non-resident can also have some part entry into India by way of a license office or a branch office or a project office. Now, one important thing I like to point out that where, whereas India permits all these entry options, you will notice in none of these entry options it is compulsory or it is mandatory for any local participation. That is like happens in many other countries if a non-resident goes to that country the non-resident cannot own any business there 100%. He has to have some local ownership there. In India, despite the fact that we are not a 100% free economy, still 
we are very liberal the government of india is very liberal to allow 100% ownership of business enterprises in india by the non residents of course there are certain restrictions certain regulations which i'll be dealing with in subsequent slides 